Good morning, Good morning. everybody. Good morning. Uh, we are live. We are live. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. It is 10 a.m. This is the February 24, 2022 Coastal Permitted Administrator Hearing. The Mendocino County Coastal Permitted Administrator meetings will be conducted virtually and not available for in-person public participation. The provisions of Government Code Section 54953 and the recommendation of the Mendocino County Health Officer. Meetings are live streamed and available for viewing on the Mendocino County YouTube page. So with that, I will call the meeting to order at uh, 10.01 a.m. And do we have a determination of noticing? The item on the agenda was noticed. Thank you. Properly, correct? Properly. All right, thank you. So um, taking us to item number 3A on the regular calendar, this is CDP 2017-0033. The owner applicant is Black Diamond uh, Holding LLC. Agent is Schlosser Newberger Architects. The request is a coastal development standard permit proposal to construct a single family residence with ancillary uses and restore dune mat habitat within the remainder of the lot. It has been determined um, that this project is subject to the California Environmental Quality Act and a mitigated negative declaration has been prepared for the project. The project is located in the coastal zone north of the city of Fort Bragg on the west uh, and west of State Route 1, located at 25,600 Ward Avenue, Fort Bragg, California, Assessor's Parcel Number APN 069141-44. May I please get a staff report? Yes, my pleasure. Juliana Cherry with Mendocino County Planning and Building Services. Uh, the application, as you mentioned, is to construct a single family home on the portion of Ward Avenue that runs parallel with the shore and state parks. Uh, between the shore and the house is a county road, Ward Avenue. Um, state Parks has had a lot of success with protecting the Howell's Spine Flower and this property, uh, given its proximity to the dunes and state parks, um, has a significant amount of Howell's Spine Flower on site. Um, after the application was submitted and the initial request for comments for two agencies was sent out, uh, the applicant, um, their agent, Robert Schlosser, their consultants, um, CDFW, State Parks, and I think U.S. Fish and Wildlife and also California Native Plant Society all met at the site to look at the site constraints and what was possible. Where was the least impacting location to put the home? Um, out of that meeting, we came to the conclusion that an incidental take permit would be likely. Uh, incidental take permits are issued by California Fish and Wildlife, and they're only reviewed after a mitigated negative declaration is considered by the county. So um, while very early on, we identified that there would be an incidental take permit and that 100% of the property would be considered sensitive habitat. Um, it has taken some time to get to the hearing today. Um, so the application fairly kept the home where it was initially proposed. There is an agreement between the property owners on Ward Avenue, how far west the front of the home can be located. Uh, the applicant has really held the line on that and located in the front yard between the street and the front of the house would be the septic, the leach field. Um, then the house would be right on that agreed upon westerly distance from the street. Um, and then behind the house nestled up against it would be uh, the well, um, but the remainder of the property, especially uh, the dune area, the property owner has proposed and agreed to try and do some habitat restoration for this Howell spine flower. This is a very tiny plant um, um, and it's really visible when you can see it as a masked area. 
but um, individually the plant is, is incredibly small. It's distributed by seed and so it it, the seeds blow in the wind during the seasons and then they the seeds kind of get captured in the undulation of the sand dune and then uh, root. So it, it is uh, the state parks has had a lot of success with restoring this habitat and we anticipate that the property owner can uh, use those uh, methods that state parks has had to continue to restore the habitat on their property. So that's really uh, the crux of the biscuit for this project, but I'll go over some other specific things. We have received comments from adjoining property owners who um, I'm very grateful have taken the time to read the staff report and the MND. In preparing the MND, I drew heavily upon a similar project located in another area of the county. And inadvertently in the preparation of the mitigated negative declaration, I included some of that other project information, which I should have deleted. For example, this property does not include a gate. It does not include a gravel driveway and it is not located in a highly scenic area where if it were, it would be subject to an 18 foot height limit. The staff report correctly describes that the property is located um, in a special treatment area because of its proximity to state parks, but it's not subject to the development criteria that highly scenic areas are such as height. The project uh, satisfies all of the development standards for height, building setback, um, lot coverage uh, that is part of the district where it is located. The maximum height for structures uh, along Ward Avenue is 28 feet. And there are some homes that are tall in stature like the proposed residence, but there are also homes that are single family um, and one story single story homes. So you have a different types of building elevations along the stretch of Ward Avenue. The concern that I read um, from the public comments received from the Woods, um, the Cohen um, and their spouse really had to do with the visual effect of a 28 foot tall building. Um, so those comments have been posted to the web page, and I do welcome you to read them over. Um, following talk, let's see. Um, so the property is subject to the potential of a flood hazard. It is located near uh, sea level uh, between the water and the house is a, a narrow strand and undulating dunes not very tall dunes, but they are dunes, dune habitat. Uh, those kind of topographic features can um, slow down and reduce wave rush. So if a tsunami were to come, there is some distance that could potentially protect structures. With the advent of sea level rise over time, though the structures facing Ward Avenue may um, experience the effect of flooding or extraordinary waves. So properties that are located in high hazard areas, it is our custom to ask the property owner to record a deed restriction, agreeing that uh, they will clean the debris if that does occur, and also agreeing that they might move the structure if the hazards uh, become a danger to the structures that are under consideration today. So staff is recommending condition, I believe it is 10, which would require a deed restriction. The California Coastal Commission commented on condition 10 and 16 because staff had staff feels that the property owner does have the right to apply for development for consideration. And in condition 10 D, I include that as a preamble to uh, not encouraging uh, things that uh, would reduce shoreline um, processes like seawalls or retaining walls. I also include that in condition 16. In response to Coastal Commission's comments and requests, and after consulting with the applicant, I have suggested in a memo that was distributed yesterday and posted online 
that Condition 10D be revised and Condition 16 be deleted. This would then have the effect of renumbering the subsequent conditions beginning with 17. 17 would become 16. The applicant also asked, uh, since they have already submitted an exterior lighting plan as part of their application, that that requirement um, at the time of building permit review be removed from condition 17. One of the parts of Mendocino County goals has to do with sources of glare, such as nighttime lighting. Uh, the, these policies and goals that we have are expressed in chapter 20.504, which is our highly scenic chapter. And condition 17, as recommended, reflects our goals to reduce sources of nighttime glare by reviewing things like exterior lighting plans at the time of building permits. Staff is suggesting that condition 17 be revised uh, to uh, remove that preamble about prior to building permit issuance that we would review the lighting because we have completed that as part of the review for this, this project that we're presenting today. But that we keep the remainder of that condition because the property is subject to that particular portion of our zoning code, which is 20.504.035. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, um, California Fish and Wildlife will be issuing an incidental take permit. Uh, in writing condition 22, which is intended to implement those mitigation measures that the applicant has proposed as part of this application and as part of their draft incidental take permit application to CDFW, um, I think I wrote it a little too narrowly. There is the possibility with the initial writing of that condition that the applicant um, after this hearing receives their incidental take permit pr approved by CDFW with modifications that then could trigger a requirement to amend the CDP conditions as they are approved. It, it seems a kind of like a nightmare for the applicant. So I suggest in my memo that we write it a little bit more broadly. And in condition 22, if I can just go to that briefly, I'll read to you the suggested language from the memo. Uh, basically adding a couple of sentences. The preamble to condition 22, which includes three mitigation measures, um, for mitigation measures, it would read, the property owner shall provide for the following mitigation measures as described in the draft incidental take permit application report section nine prepared by Rincon consultants and dated April, 2021. And then I suggest adding prior to the conclusion of the effective period of this permit, the property owner shall obtain final approval of an incidental take permit from California Department of Fish and Wildlife. The property owner shall comply with all requirements of said permit. When conflicts between the mitigation measures and the ITP are identified, the more restrictive measures shall be implemented after, consul after consultation with the coastal permit administrator or their designee. So this, um, I, I believe that this additional clause allows for the coastal permit or their designee to review any conflicts between the ITP and the mitigation measures and find a path forward for the applicant without causing amendments to the coastal development permit unless the CPA feels that that's warranted. Um, so the property is located in a hazard area subject to um, potential flooding in the future. It is uh, not located in a designated highly scenic area, but it is subject to some portions of that chapter having to do with its proximity to state parks and our goal regarding glare, including nighttime lighting. The pro project has been considered by the Archaeological Condition uh, Commission and accepted. 
uh, the types of habitat that were identified with the property and that will be memorialized uh, with the approval of this project includes dune mat isha, dune rush isha, shore pine isha, and wax myrtle and willow riparian isha. The project is located within um, these types of isha and the while we are recommending buffers from these ishas, uh, the the project itself is within what we consider 100% sensitive habitat. As such, if the project were denied, uh, there is the potential of a regulatory taking for denying a project because it does not satisfy uh, the regulations that we have on the books. And in the staff report, there is analysis regarding a potential regulatory taking if the project were denied. Um, the project has um, on-site septic and leach field, as I mentioned earlier, located between the street and the front of the home. Um, and um, in response to the Board of Supervisors ordinance, we have done some analysis relating to um, conservation of our limited resource during the drought water. Uh, the 1982 coastal groundwater study includes some recommendations that I believe this project can easily satisfy, for example, using low flow valves uh, for things like showers or sinks within the house, um, encouraging uh, rainwater to uh, be captured on, on the project site and not flow off. Um, also, uh, as part of this application, the property owner proposes an on-site well and water storage adjacent to the residence. Condition 19 is recommended to establish phasing of the development. The uh, property owner would complete a proof of uh, water test um, prior to the issuance of a building permit. I do note that in uh, chapter 20.516, we do talk about groundwater and the requirement to complete a groundwater study um, during the dry summer months based on the 1982 coastal groundwater study policies. In dune areas, I, I recently took note that in dune areas, this 1982 study says that dune areas should be exempt. Um, so I, I make this statement because we often talk about when a proof of water test should be done and what types of development are subject to a proof of water test. And there, there is some disagreement between agencies regarding interpretation of the 1982 coastal groundwater study. So I just wanted to draw attention that dune areas um, are exempt from that type of study based on the reading of of the study itself. Uh, public access, which is very important to our goals and policies within uh, the state of California, because we do want to make the shore available to everyone for their enjoyment. I, uh, the project is directly adjacent to state parks, which provides access to California, Mendocino County's shore and uh, California state parks. I believe that can conclude my presentation. I do want to note that the comments that we did receive by email I, regarding the misrepresentation on my part about the height limit being uh, 18 feet when in fact it's 28 feet. I did respond to the applicants, uh, the commenters this morning um, to clarify my mistake in the mitigated negative declaration. Um, and uh, staff does recommend adopting the findings and the conditions as uh, described in my memo of uh, February 24. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and yes, thank you for acknowledging those issues uh, that we received comments on uh, because those were the questions that I was gonna ask, um, but you've addressed those already, thank you. Um, Can you tell me, I mean, we received a comment from the Coastal Commission on the 22nd, 
of this month. Um, the Coastal Commission was referred this project at the beginning of the process and is this the first time they're commenting or did they previously comment and they just came back and commented again? Hmm. I believe that I've asked them several times whether they when they've been in the county if they would like to conduct a site visit with me um, and they have declined uh, due to scheduling in COVID. I I believe just my that, pet peeve is yeah, really yeah, I know, I know, I know. I'm just is, is trying. The Coastal Commission always comments at the eleventh hour, and does they often do? Hour. And I do believe that they are commenting at the eleventh hour here. I'm just trying to remember because this application was applied for in 2017. Um, whether they have provided comments earlier, and I believe they have, but not on these particular issues that they commented on on the staff report. They commented on the ESHA when we distributed the initial application. So that would be some time ago. That would be in 2018. Okay. But they're provided a copy of the environmental document 30 days in advance of the hearing. Yes, they were. The environmental document was distributed on January 21st or 22nd. And I noted that I actually emailed the commission staff to let them know that it was posted um, at that time. So um, a month ago. A month to comment. It, yeah. Okay. Well, as I've said, if the CPA finds it unacceptable to see comments come in from a public agency like the Coastal Commission that does this, you know, over and over and over at the 11th hour. Right. Anyway, that's just my, my comment. Um, so it is, thank you very much, and thank you for the memo that clarified uh, the, uh, the staff report and the initial study as well as the condition language. As you noted, this was um, posted and it was also provided to the applicant, correct? Yes, I had been in correspondence with all parties um, okay. all day yesterday and the day before. Okay. So with that said, um, thank you very much, and I'm just going to go ahead and ask the applicant or the applicant's agent if they wish to speak on this matter. <clears throat> Mr. Schlosser, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, any comments, questions, um, rebuttals? Uh, this is your opportunity. Um, we have the reviewed the, the staff report and the memo that Juliana prepared yesterday. And with those changes in the memo, uh, we accept the staff report with those uh, in its entirety. And we, we, if it goes, it goes, the hearing goes along, and you accept the, the staff report as amended, uh, we're all in. And that's my only comment. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the applicant side that wishes to speak on this matter? There's no one here. No. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. Is there any members from the public that wish to speak on this matter? There have been no requests. No requests. Thank you. So with that, I'll return it back to the Coastal Permit Administrator. Um, in reviewing the comments that were submitted, the revisions to the staff report, which included the memo of February 24th, 2022, I will go ahead and approve the project subject to the findings and conditions that have been outlined in the February 24th, 2022 memorandum to the Coastal Permit Administrator, as well as the evidence uh, provided to the CPA uh, in reference to the staff report, CDP 2017-0033 with that, I will approve the project. Uh, Juliana, thank you for a very detailed report and presentation. Well, you're definitely welcome. Um, and again, my apologies for inadvertently copying information from another report in the MND. I would like to note that this project is subject to a local 10-day appeal period. Uh, appeals can be filed <clears throat> with the Mendocino County Clerk when and a fee is required. 
following the conclusion of any local action, there is a subsequent notice sent to the California Coastal Commission in which they establish their own 10 day appeal period. At the conclusion of all the appeal periods, um, then uh, the permit is um, eligible to be issued. Thank you very much. And I'll now move to item number four, matters from staff. Are there any matters from staff? Um, no, not for me. Um, thank you very much for today's meeting. Thank you. Do we have any matters from the public? Anybody that uh, wishes to speak on any item not on the agenda? No matters from public are in the waiting room. Thank you. And with that, I will go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 1026 AM. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.